Let's talk about ulnar nerve compression at the level of Guyon's Canal, which should be really called ulnar tunnel syndrome, but it is more frequently referred to as ulnar nerve compression at Guyon's Canal. So Guyon's Canal was the initial guy that described this anatomic nerve compression. Let's talk about the anatomy because understanding anatomy is fundamental to understanding the nerve compression and the physical exam findings and signs or symptoms the patient will be reporting or showing. So first of all, let's just talk about the ulnar nerve proper. So it's coming down here on the ulnar aspect and it's very important that 8.3 centimeters proximal to the pisiform, you'll see that the dorsal cutaneous sensory branch comes off. Why is this important? Because this does not travel through Guyon's Canal. So you should not have any nerve symptoms related to this branch that comes off. The dorsal cutaneous branch innervates the dorsal aspect of the hand, the dorsal aspect of the small finger, and the dorsal one half of the ring finger. So I've been here, basically, if there's involvement of these sensory areas, you should suspect ulnar nerve compression proximal to Guyon's Canal because this nerve comes off and does not travel, the nerve fascicles do not travel through Guyon's Canal and therefore cannot be compressed in this nerve compression syndrome. So here I have a view of the hand, like so, and this is a axial view of the hand looking straight through the tunnel like this. So let's talk about the different anatomic landmarks. The pisiform and the hamate are the most important because they're ligamentous structures that span between the two that basically form the tunnel. The most important things that you need to remember are that the nerve will branch into a deep branch and a superficial branch. Here's the superficial branch and here's the deep branch. You can see here's the ulnar nerve coming down and it will divide here. These different areas led to the division or classification into three zones. I don't think that knowing the three zones is important except that they're tested and sometimes referred to just for pimping purposes. Most important is to just know the anatomy and how that relates to actually decompressing Guyon's canal. So we'll do both. So as we see here, the ulnar nerve is going to give off a deep branch. The deep branch is purely motor. It gives off the motor to the intrinsic musculature of the hand. That includes the abductor digiti minimi, the flexor digiti minimi, opponent's digiti minimi, the third and fourth lumbrical muscles, both dorsal and palmar interossei. And very important to note that the first dorsal interosseus is the most helpful muscle to test because you can easily isolate it by having them push against your finger and you can feel the muscle right there with, your th with my thumb. The adductor pollicis is also purely innervated by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve and the flexor pollicis brevis and that's just the deep head. So again, we saw the branch the deep branch go underneath the flexor digiti minimi and underneath the opponent's digiti minimi and it continues to wrap around this way and innervates all of these muscles. So what about the superficial branch? The superficial branch has been referred to as a purely sensory nerve, but technically it gives off a branch to the palmaris brevis muscle, which just serves to wrinkle the skin of the hand here. So you can, for making things easier, you can basically think about the superficial branch as sensory only because it goes to provide sensation to the volar aspect of the small finger and the volar one half aspect of the ring finger on the ulnar side. So again, the deep branch traveling, it goes pierces through the hypothenars, dives down deep, and then the superficial branch stays superficial obviously because it's a sensory, not purely sensory, but mostly sensory nerve. So let's see that here through this cross section, or I should say axial cut. What forms these different structures that makes it differentiate between going superficial and deep? So again, the deep branch here will dive down deep. What does it dive deep to? In between the pisiform and the hamate, as you can see here, there's two different structures that are important. The floor is formed by the pisohamate ligament. So here, the floor, you can see here how the nerve is running on top of it, that is a ligament that spans between the pisiform and the hamate. The roof, which is cut right here, is actually the common tendinous origin of the hypothenar musculature. All the hypothenar muscles originate from this arch that spans between the hamate and the pisiform. Again, that is not a ligament, 
but rather it is an arch that spans between the two that allows all of the hypothenar muscles to have a common origin. This is frequently misrepresented in diagrams and miscommunicated because the ligament and the arch are frequently confused. There's different terms for these two, sometimes called the hypothenar arcus tendinus, or the fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles, or the common origin for the hypothenars. And you can, you can see here this diagram, it's cut, and in this diagram, it's intact. That forms the roof for the deep ulnar branch, and the floor is the pisohamate ligament for the deep ulnar. The superficial branch is running, obviously superficial, to the deep branch. So it makes a lot of sense why they name them different things and why superficial branch becomes sensory because that's going to the skin and the deep branch needs to go deep because that's gonna to go to the deeper musculature. Now let's talk about these three zones that are sometimes tested. Basically, they were classified into one, two, three based on whether it was motor and sensory, or motor only, or the sensory part. So again, zone one is essentially prior to the bifurcation because that's when it's the, still the ulnar nerve that's mixed motor and sensory. And the sensory fibers or fascicles are volar to the motor fascicles. That makes sense, right? The motor is gonna go deep, so why would they be running on top in, in when it's ulnar nerve proper? After the bifurcation, you get to zone two. Zone two is motor only, so basically this is considered zone two, the deep branch. And zone three is essentially the other side of the bifurcation, which is here, which is purely sensory. Again, remember it has a branch to the palmaris brevis, so it cannot be purely called sensory if you wanna be technical, but for learning purposes and making this easier to remember, think about zone three is purely sensory, zone two is purely motor, and zone one is ulnar nerve proper with motor and sensory mixed fibers. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful for learning ulnar tunnel syndrome.